together to welcome on stage Quizmaster Pig Brain. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen and all you friends and wonderful quizzers out there watching this edition of Tata Crucible for Corporates 2021. You're with me, Pig Brain, and uh, we are here today with the fifth cluster of Tata Crucible and that comes to you from Chennai. We've got a couple of these cities which are exclusive locations. Chennai is one of them. And uh, you get some really outstanding quizzers coming in from here, all national champion material. And they've done that not just once, but many a time. So you can expect to watch a phenomenal quiz here from the Chennai edition of Tata Crucible for, for, the, for the moment. Uh, we're going to be starting with the two wild cards. So we've got 12 of them who've gone in through the preliminary rounds, of whom three each will make it to the final. A quick word on the rules before we get on to introduce our contestants to you. Uh, those are the fair play protocols that everyone's pretty much aware of. It's really nice for the teams to have consented uh, to be allowed to be screened on individual screens by the event management team while they are taking part. That's just to keep a fair play playground, so to say, in place. The rules, of course, are simple. Five seconds per question is the length of time that the question would remain alive. So after five seconds, the question lapses. And there's only one attempt per question, whoever presses the buzzer first. And uh, three of them, of course, go into the final from each of the wildcards. For those of you watching this telecast, just remember, we will not be able to ask you any audience questions right now because the whole aim is to get to the final quickly as we come to you uh, with the capsule of the wildcards and the final. The buzzer indicator light can also be put in only in the final because we get a little bit of a breather there to do that. And it's time, therefore, for us to meet our finalists from Chennai, who are in the first wildcard. Remember, three will qualify. And uh, from here, we will be playing the Chennai edition of Tata Crucible for Corporates. It's my pleasure and privilege to introduce to you six outstanding quizzers this time who've made it into the first wildcard. Starting with Kiran from Matrimony.com. Welcome to you, Kiran, as he qualifies consistent. He's always been around at a Tata Crucible. Neighboring him as our second contestant here today, representing Cap Gemini, is Vijay. Welcome to you, Vijay, into our wild card here today. As our third contestant, the ever consistent and former multiple champion, Jay Kanthan from Tata Consultancy Services. Welcome, Jay Kanthan, to yet another Tata Crucible. And, well, Tamil Nadu is full of IT giants, and that's illustrative in this lineup. Representing Wipro is Ritu. Welcome, Ritu, to our wildcard here today. Neighboring him is Sham from Emphasis, as he qualifies into this round of 12. And completing our lineup from Cognizant is Deepak. Welcome, Deepak, to this round. Well, I've got 10 questions. Plus one, you get it right. Minus one, if you get it wrong. Remember, if they press the buzzer while I am speaking, then they're pretty much indicating they know the answer, so I'll stop reading the question at that time. Nothing will appear on your screen, just hear me out, so audio is what matters to you, and that's the easiest way to go through the wild cards, and the fairest way, because you get the opportunity to stop me when you think you know the answer. One attempt per question, Tata Crucible, Chennai, the wild cards, starting with question number one. All hands on the buzzer. His interview by Playboy in October 1963, funnily enough, featured issues on the developmental era of India and strategies to restore peace in India. Jay Kanthan has gone for it. I think this is Nehru. Nehru. He had an interview, well, some say supposedly, and some say it was a crafted interview, but nonetheless, Interview did appear in the Playboy. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, courageous man, if he did give that interview to Playboy, but that's a plus one to Jai Kantan. He gets underway and gets on to the first pointer. As we go to the second one, hands on the buzzer. 
which effect, typically meaning a narrow place in the Gaelic language, is based on the commonly accepted perception that you get what you pay for. Assuming Deepak's giving it a shot. Yes, Deepak. Uh, is this the IKEA effect? Oh, minus one to you in a little bit of a hurry. The Shiva's regal effect. And I would have spoken far more, which would have led you to Shiva's regal, but minus one to you. Early days, don't worry. You can recover that very quickly as we go to question number three. It's a Gurgaon based entity. They've offered pay later as a new concept. The digital campaign became extremely popular because of a pig called Million. Someone's gone for it, it's Sham. Pay later, a pig called Million, yes. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I want, I'll guess Paytm. Oh, minus one to you on Paytm. The answer was free charge. And, uh, well, he hit a little early. And three questions done, two of them on minus one, Jack Hanthan on one. As we go to question number four. Which banking brand is typically discussed in a book authored by David Kynston named The Lion Wakes? A modern history of Dash. Deepak Rodericks, yes. Uh, it is the HSBC Bank. Superb answer. Plus one to you. He recovers ground with that answer. HSBC's history is the Lion Wakes. Good one. Question number five. Which mobility company, as they call themselves, rolled out a corporate shuttle service? Jay Khantan. This is Uber. Plus one. On question number five, he moves to plus two. At some stage, I think in the next couple of questions, he's going to ask himself, is there a probability to finish fourth? If the answer is no, then they know how to hedge. Question number six. <clears throat> Which store was specifically designed like a maze? So customers who walk in get lost. Kiran's giving it a shot. Is this IKEA? Well played. Plus one. Uh, it's actually designed on the concept of a maze. So people stay in the store for way longer and actually walk into sections that they didn't necessarily plan to walk into. Beautifully answered. Plus one to him. Question number seven. Which entity in India and a giant in their industry launched a new initiative with the word re-begin? Jai Kantan. This is TCS for, for women to come back to work after, the, after they've taken a break. Excellent. Well played on that one. TCS to get women back to work. So re-begin is to relaunch a career for a woman. Question number eight. On which legendary American business magnet and philanthropist, if I may add, would you associate the book Titan? The life of Dash. Jayakantan is not giving in. This is John D. Rockwell. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. He moves to plus four and he's dominating this wild card. Question number nine. Which small finance bank which says Badlao Hamesha weaves a story around Ganesh Utsav Bringing in Amir Khan to explain small financing. It's a very interesting launch of a campaign. Deepak's giving it a shot. Yes, Deepak. Is this the Bandhan Bank? Oh, minus one to you. This is the AU Small Finance Bank, which really went brave for a small finance entity to sign up Amir Khan. And uh, that's a minus one to you. So he's landed himself in trouble. Vijay and Ritu will be looking at the last question very carefully. If one of them can get it right, they'll go through. I think Kiran and Jai Kantan will be very calm. They've played this game many times. As we go to the final question. This former employee of Lehman Brothers, 
married his colleague Margaret from the University of Buffalo. Share Kantan yet again. This is the finance minister of uh, Tamil Nadu, Nitya. Uh, it's perfectly correct. Palanivel Tyagarajan. Well, if you tell me PTR, sometimes it can be difficult, but I do follow Tamil Nadu pretty closely, so I got that right. But uh, plus one to Jai Kantan. As he goes to plus five, Kiran is on plus one. So the two of them, well, uh, they're regular faces in a Chennai final, so no surprises there. Kiran going through, Jai Kantan going through. We've got a tiebreaker now between Vijay and Ritu. One of them will go through. Deepak is the one who really missed out. He got a plus one and then took minus two. So he's smiling. And he's like, oh, God, why did I do that? And he gave a very good answer. HSBC was a tough question to crack. Uh, but then that's how it goes. So he and Sham will miss out, while the other two will now battle for a slot in the Chennai final. Uh, one question at a time. Is your tiebreakers? Let me start with the uh, first one for you. Let me see who's going to crack this. Which of these global chains created by Dave Thompson would you associate to square-shaped burgers, McDonald's, Wendy's, or, well, I'll keep it at that. Square-shaped burgers. Ritu's giving it a shot. Go ahead. Uh, white, white Castle. Sorry? White, white Castle. You get a minus one on that. I said McDonald's and Wendy's, and you went for a third option as White Castle. Well, I haven't heard a burger outlet like that yet, but uh, well, he certainly thought he had an answer on that one. Vijay will make it to the final, but silence can sometimes be valuable. So from Cap Gemini, Vijay will make it because Ritu took that negative, and I really can't help with that answer uh, as uh, we've got Jay Kantan, Kiran, and Vijay. Moving through to the Chennai final from the first wild card, you stay tuned as we come back to you with six other contestants, of whom three more will join the Chennai final. That's coming right up. You stay there as we get the next six in. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. You're with me, Pig Brain, watching the Chennai wildcards of Tata Crucible for Corporates 2021. You just witnessed the first wildcard where three of them got through to the final. We've got six more here today with us, of whom three will qualify. The fair play protocols, as all of us understand, five seconds of time for a question. If no one buzzes, the question lapses in five seconds. There's only one attempt per question, and we really Appreciate all the contestants for giving us their consent to be monitored by the event management team on individual screens while they take part. But at the end of the day, they've just got five seconds to contest. And of course, with no one else in those rooms is a declaration they've given us. All of those are just checks and balances that we put in place in the interest of integrity for a sport of this kind. But at the end of the day, it's five seconds where you process whatever I read out, and then figure out the answer and answer. So that's quite a bit to do in five seconds, in my opinion. And time for us to get started. Three of you will qualify. Keep that in mind. And uh, the buzzer indicator lights will not appear as far as the audience is concerned during the wildcards because we need to quickly get to the final so we do not have a post-edit time. And all audience questions will also be featured during the final. So ladies and gentlemen, before we get started here, we know the rules, we've understood the terrain. Let's take a look at our six contestants in this wildcard. Qualifying as our first wildcard contestant here today, representing iTutor India is Jitender. Welcome Jitender to our wildcard here. Neighboring Jitender, a regular face at Chennai quizzing into this round of 12 is Yashwant, representing Vaidishwaran and co. Welcome Yashwant. As our third contender here today from Vedanta, representing them is Stephen. Welcome, Stephen, to this round. Moving across from Stephen to Arjun Siva, representing TTK Healthcare. Welcome to this round, Arjun. Neighboring him from Freshworks here today is another regular face from the Chennai terrain, Ramesh. Welcome, Ramesh, to this round. 
And completing our lineup representing Ernst and Young with us here today is Sri Ganesh. Welcome to you. Those then are our six contenders. Three of them will qualify. Time to get started with this portion or this part of the wild card to identify the three remaining slots for the Chennai final. We'll begin with the questions right away. Question number one. Which Indian, which Indian is the subject of a book called The Polyester Prince? Authored, Ramesh has gone for it from Freshworks. Yes, Ramesh? Your mic, Ramesh. Dhirubhai Ambani. Is perfectly correct. He gets that right. He gets a plus one, is Ramesh, on Dhirubhai Ambani. So that's perfectly correct. Question number two. Which international entity, extremely respected, is known as the yellow frame? Yashwant's giving it a shot. Yes, Yashwant. Uh, I'm saying Wolf Rollins. Oh, minus one to you. The answer, National Geographic. The yellow frame. Well, that's a simple one. If you look back, he's smiling. Question number three. He'll have to recover that quickly. I'm sure he will. He's a good quizzer. Question three. Bangalore headquartered fintech company recently made headlines for showing Neeraj Chopra in unimaginable avatars. Stephen. Cred. Is perfectly correct. He'll get a plus one on cred. And uh, that takes two of them on a plus one as we go to question number four. Slash four will take you to who or what on Facebook.com. Sri Ganesh. Uh, it's Mark Zuckerberg. Lovely. On Facebook, slash four will take you straight to the profile page of Mark Zuckerberg. Plus one there to Sri Ganesh. So three of them are on plus one. This wild card starting very differently as we go to question five. Based on an iconic fashion brand, filmmaker Ridley Scott announced a movie called House of Dash. Sri Ganesh, yet again from Ernst & Young. Yes. Gucci. Lovely. Do you know who it features? Uh, it has uh, Lady Gaga. Lovely. Jared Leto. Oh boy, he knows everything about it. Perfect. Plus one to you. Question number six. Which MNC launched Tidy Trails, T-I-D-Y, Trail, T-R-A-I-L-S, a special initiative to sustain post-consumer plastic waste in India, especially in holy cities like Mathura, Brindavan. They also partner with the United Way. It's a huge global campaign which saw India, Yashwant. I'm guessing it's uh, Hindustan Unilever. Oh, he took a shot. I think that was a, you know, somewhere down the line types. Pepsi's global campaign. So he gets a minus one on that. Not quite the morning for him is Yashwant. As we go to the next one, question number seven. Which conglomerate in the world owns the copyright to the song Happy Birthday? Stephen's gone for it. Yes, Stephen. One of the others. Plus one. Stephen gets another one. So two of them on two. Ramesh on one. Three questions to go. This wild card's playing out very differently from the first one. Question number eight. Which cement brand famed for its Virat strength and Divar campaign? Arjun's gone for it. Yes, Arjun. Ambuja. Plus one to you. Question number nine. Georgetown, originally known as Black Town, was the first settlement of Madras. It housed one of the first warehouses of which company in then Madras? Interesting history of India. 
Georgetown, originally or also known as Black Town, various reasons because of a dominant Indian populace, saw the first settlement of Madras and the first large warehouse of which company? Not a tough one. Anyone trying? No one trying? All right. Everyone choosing to keep quiet. Arjun and Ramesh do not want to take a negative at this stage. The answer, and they're going to kick themselves on this one, is East India Company. Well, Chennai has so much of East India history, you should have taken a half chance at least on that one. It would have been a good logical half chance to take. Final question, two of them for sure into the final, is Stephen and Sri Ganesh. Final question for the third slot. Which EdTech company calls itself the number one online boot camp for digital economic skills. It's a niche they're taking up and they've currently launched a massive campaign called hashtag cannot be locked down. They committed more than 100 crores to this campaign to get people to learn online. Very large giant. Huge footprint in India. Cannot be locked down. 100 crore campaign. In fact, I think the entire campaign was ambition cannot be locked down. Nobody on the buzzer on that. That was the final question. And the answer is simply learn. So Arjun and Ramesh choosing to play it very, very carefully. Stephen and Sri Ganesh make it to the Chennai final as we go into a tiebreaker. Because we've got Stephen on two, Sri Ganesh on two. Arjun Ramesh locked on one point apiece. So let me go to the tiebreaker questions. Only for Arjun and Ramesh. All right. So it's just for the two of you. Here we go. What in the modern world... What in the modern world is the concept of revenge tourism? Arjun's giving it a shot. What is revenge tourism? It's the heavy flow of tourism uh, once the lockdown has sort of abated due to the fact that tourism was uh, at, at a low level uh, because of the lockdowns and lack of flights and everything. So revenge tourism is the comeback where people are uh, traveling a lot more than they would have otherwise uh, as sort of retaliation for, for the entire lockdown that we've been going through. Oh, so there's been a psychological state where people have felt uh, that, my God, I didn't like this lockdown and otherwise that many people wouldn't have traveled. So with yes. vengeance, they travel and it's called revenge tourism. Well, revenge tourism will take Arjun into the Chennai final. He gets himself a plus one. So, ladies and gentlemen, from that uh, wild card, we've got three more qualifying into the Chennai final. Stephen, Sri Ganesh and Arjun. So, they will join the other three in the final that you will witness just on the other side. You stay tuned as we come back to you with the Chennai final of Tata Crucible. Hello and a warm welcome to all of you here as you are witnessing Tata Crucible's Corporate Edition 2021, the Chennai Final. You're with me, Big Brain, after witnessing those two wild cards. We know the six of them who've made it, but let me introduce them to you before we get started with this edition of our Cluster Final. With me here today as our first finalist from matrimony.com is Kiran. Welcome, Kiran, to our final here today. Neighboring him as our second finalist representing Capgemini, is Vijay. Welcome Vijay on board. As our third contestant, the defending champion from the cluster, a very consistent quizzer from TCS, Jai Kanthan. Welcome to you, Jai Kanthan. Neighboring him from Vedanta, as the young Tamil Nadu brigade keeps qualifying every year, keeping that culture alive, is Stephen. Welcome to you, Stephen, into our final. 
As we move across to another young shop quizzer representing TTK Healthcare, Arjun Shiva. Welcome to you. And completing our lineup from the consulting domain representing Ernst & Young, we have with us Sri Ganesh. Welcome to you. So those then, ladies and gentlemen, are six contenders. Time for us to get started. As the world has been celebrating, getting faster, higher and stronger, it is our way to celebrate the future and prepare young corporates to get them to show strength, strategy and speed, which is really what is going to be required in a post-COVID environment, whether you're an individual resurrecting your career, a brand or a corporate, sometimes applicable even at a Tata Crucible. For the moment, as we wish the six of them the very best, we'll pick action on the first frontier of our battle here today from Chennai. Time to test their strength. Here it comes. All right, contestants, before we get started, could I request you to hold your buzzers up as we unlock the buzzer system? And hands on the buzzer question on your screen, starting with the first one from the Chennai final on your screen. Here it comes. This is a famous historian. He became famous in India recently for the book, Tata, the global corporation that built Jai Kantan has gone for it. Yes, Jai Kantan. I'm guessing this is Peter Casey. Minus 100 to you on that one. Uh, this is historian Marseya Rainu, uh, who spoke about how Indian capitalism, in many ways with consciousness, was brought about and built by a single corporation, the Tatas. Minus 100 on the first one to him. As we go to the second one, here it comes. This is a gentleman named William Hulbert, H-U-L-B-E-R-T. He's considered the father of something, which today has gone on in multiple countries in different forms. But he was the one who created the first version of something, huge money spinner that also made sport extremely popular. He's considered the father of what? William Hulbert, nobody on the buzzer. Five seconds of time lapsing. The answer is the creation of the first ever sports league as a concept. He brought together that commercial thought, created the baseball league in the United States. Sport after sport today, whether it's the IPL or soccer or, of course, baseball in the US, world over, the model has been replicated. Great pioneer. As we go to the next one, no one getting that right. Question number three, on your screen, here it comes. This is a gentleman named Ferdinand. He introduced something as a standard unit which changed the lives of many people in this world. Ferdinand Monier is his full name. What did Monier give the world? Five seconds lapsing again. No one's on the buzzer. The answer that I was looking for is the Monier charts, which are used for testing visual accuracy, largely for eye power testing. And of course, there are other versions and other names that were created by others. But one of the most popular ones was the Monier chart. As we go to the next one, tough Chennai final, and you would expect a Chennai to be tough. Question number four on your screens now. This is a gentleman named Sri Ram Jaikanthan's gone for it. He devised the PIN code for the Indian postal system. Would you know his name? Um, uh, Sri Ram. Uh... All right, we'll not push you on that. The answer was the PIN code Velankar. Uh, Sri Ram Velankar, the gentleman, it's more out of you know, academic interest. Uh, he was actually additional secretary to the Union Ministry of Communications. And very interestingly, he gave India the concept of a PIN code, which today has helped us start mail delivery and has stood the test of time. A hundred there to Jai Kantan as we refresh the buzzers and uh, go to the penultimate question in this first frontier of strength. On your screens now. The lady in this picture 
is Miss Bhuvaneshwari. She currently runs a Chennai-based company that was started by her grandfather in 1942. And he was cut off from England owing to the war and needed an outlet to basically present his works. This Indian entity called Thought Publications or Indian Thought Publications. Jai Kantan's going for it. Yeah, this is the writer R.K. Narayan. Beautifully played. Oh, beautifully played by Jai Kantan. He gets that absolutely right. The founding father of this publishing house was none less than R.K. Narayan. His legacy continues to this day. As we move on to the final one, early days in this game, Jai Kantan off to a slender lead on 100. The final question on screen now. This is an entity that was formed to encourage teak business in India. It expanded all over Asia. Jai Kantan's giving it a go. Yeah, this is the Bombay Burma Trading Company. Well played. 100 again to him. He's got RK Narayan. He's got Bombay Burman absolutely right. Uh, part of the Vadia group, they really helped grow the teak business across this region. Early days here today at the Tata Crucible from Chennai. But before we move any further and take a look at where the contestants stand, let me ask you an audience question. What you've got to do is to just key in the answers into that chat box wherever you are watching this quiz. If you are fast and correct, you stand to win a prize from the Tatas. I've been receiving one request as the announcements of Crucible have been going on online saying, hey, don't just ask us business questions. We're also school kids watching this. So I've tried to keep it a little lighthearted for the audience so you can win prizes, guys. And uh, here's the first one. And it's a generic one. 2021 inspiring this question. Which is the only city in the world? Which is the only city in the world to have hosted the modern Olympics thrice? Not once, not twice. Thrice, only one city. All you got to do is to key in the city name. Do that quickly. While we get back to our contestants and take a look at the scorecard, Crucible Caution coming up on your screen now. Very tentative start. The last two questions actually getting the scoreboard moving into the positives. Jack Kanthan, the only one who's moved ahead with two very good answers, R.K. Narayan and uh, Bombay Burma Trading, getting him to that 200. I'm sure the rest will follow as we move to the second frontier of our game here today. Time for our contestants to unfold their strategy. Here it comes. Hundred remains the value. One attempt, five seconds. If we are ready, we start with the first one coming up on your screen now. This was formed as a part of the disinvestment exercise that's carried out by the government of India with which other company? The company was originally a government enterprise, went on to become a Tata company. In association now, it is... Uh, it got formed as part of a disinvestment exercise. World of Tatas in a sense, hemisphere. Government to Tata. None on the buzzer, five seconds. Tough questions here today for the Chennai round. The answer, VSNL. VSNL essentially was created to cover the hemisphere and therefore hemisphere and Tata Communications, of course, the Tata entity that evolved out of VSNL. Erstwhile VSNL. As we move to the next one, tough questions here today, and the second one on your screens. Now, in 1890, in a small Pennsylvania town, inventor Edward Goodrich carried out a series of experiments. He tried to heat carbon so intensely that it would result in diamond. 
it did not work. So he began mixing clay with carbon and electrically started fusing it. The resultant was a product with shiny specks that was hard enough to scratch glass. Because of this, it ended up in a tie-up or an amalgamation with a giant company from Tamil Nadu. What are we talking about as a tie-up with the Murugappa group from Tamil Nadu? Kiran is giving it a shot. Is it a uh, uh, carporandum? Beautiful. Oh, beautiful 100 to him. The whole idea was heating carbon. I was giving you science, but the outcome is carborandum, uh, which basically the carborandum universal actually, as the company was known, and the Murugappa group. Superb 100 to him. Quality answer. As we go to the next one on your screens, now. Identify a person who is one of the richest celebrities in the world, which means dead celebrity. It's one of their patented logos. Steven's gone for it. You got to think uh, and work the answer out. Yeah, Steven. Just a guess, I'm going to say Michael Jackson. And why would you say that from that image? Uh, because uh, one of the songs is Heal the World. So. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. This is the identity of the Heal the World Foundation. It would lead you to Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson is one of the richest celebrities, which is celebrities who earn money even after they are dead. And Michael Jackson is one of them. Superb answer. 100, Stephen. As we go to the next one. On your screens now. For seven years in the 1880s, Charles Herbert, Chai Kantan's gone for it. Yeah, this is Higginbottoms. Higginbottoms had been a lawn tennis champion from South India. An enterprise scaled great heights under him. It was Higginbottoms under this tennis champion. As we go to the next one, a beautiful 100 to Jack Anthony He's beginning to build that lead. He's on 300. Next one on your screen. Now, it's a famous young entity that was recently acquired by the Tatars. Jack Anthony again. This is 1MG. Well played. The one was carefully left in the background, removing the MG bit. And beautifully played to get that 100. He's taking a chance on a good one at that. Moves, I think, to 400. He's going to grow in strength. And people know how he plays. So Tamil Nadu will be careful. Question number six. On your screen now. What you see here is an app called the Daily Gong. G-O-N-G. This has been created by a new age avatar of an institution that started way back in the 1930s. The app has essentially been created by a financial services entity, which is a subsidiary of this 1930 entity. Fantastic question. Daily gong. None of them on the buzzer. Five seconds of time lapsing on that one. The answer. Technology to the rescue of the Madras Stock Exchange. The Madras Stock Exchange has gone digital with a mobile app called the Daily Gong. Question number seven. On your screens now. He left his job in the space and defense procurement industry. Started his own company with the help of a Frenchman named George Vassell. Which famous company did he start? Arjun has gone for it, yes. Or who is he, anything? Fab India. Oh, minus 100 to you on that one. Uh, this is Kanwar Grover. Well, and uh, tough one for you on that one. As we go to the next one, he gets a minus 100. And the next one coming up on your screens now. 
with operations in over 23 states and four union territories, this person entered the Limca Book of Records for owning the single largest fleet of commercial vehicles by a private sector company. So much so that he went on to grow in political might and also runs a media entity. Who is this? Who probably would be far more simpler to crack in your neighboring state of Karnataka. Massive fleet. Vijay from Capgemini. Um, Vijay Anand, Vijay Anand Road Lines was the company with the largest fleet. Sorry? Uh, Vijayanand uh, with Vijayanand Road Lines. VRL. We'll give VRL. it to you on that plus 100. Vijay Sankeshwar, the man behind VRL, a large fleet. And uh, Vijay Karnataka was a publication in the media space that belongs to the same gentleman. Well, in Karnataka, that could be easy. In Tamil Nadu, not so as easy as it would be in Karnataka. As we go to the next one, 100 to him. People are slowly beginning to score and warm up. As we go to question number nine in the segment on screen now. Employers and contractors of which organization receive this award for outstanding work? Kiran. Is this uh, NASA? Called the Silver Snoopy Award, Kiran will get 100. High quality answer. Beautifully played. He gets a hundred on that. It's a character uh, which actually comes from Peanuts. And uh, NASA has an award for its people. We'll refresh the buzzer and go to the next question on your screens. Now. Truth is God. The entity on the left was started in 1963 for a very specific reason. The entity on the right was started in 1987. The services of one on the left became less restrictive and it opened up to more and more people. What's this entity on the left, which is also located in Kathmandu, Moscow, Tehran, whose budgets and expenditure are controlled by the Indian Ministry of External Affairs? The original objective was to serve the Indian Defense Forces and their families. It's a phenomenal creation, stood the test of time for quality and delivery. What institution are we saluting here? None of them on the buzzer. Five seconds of time ticking away. Well, with presence as far as Moscow and Tehran, ladies and gentlemen, we are saluting the contributions of Kendriya Vidyalayas in India. Well, what an institution that has stood the test of time. It completely demystifies the logic that only private schooling can be good, which anyways is a myth. I'm, I'm deep into education and I can make that comment with reasonable authority that we always have this perception which is so wrong about government schools and institutions. Question number 11, hands on the buzzer. Question on your screen now. Which entity would you associate to acquiring Hyderabad Olwyn in 1993? Morarji Desai had a special preference for this brand that he got everything replaced in his time with this particular brand, which he said was among the most respectable and best in terms of economy. Pepsi got launched in India thanks to a tie-up between the Punjab Agro and this company. Your overall answer is a Tata entity. Mm. Five seconds of time ticking away. Nobody on the buzzer on that one. Steven's just gone for it. Yes, Steven. Go ahead. Nick of time. Just a guess. I'm going to say Voltas. Beautiful guess. Oh, extremely well played, Stephen. Voltas actually was the one which helped Pepsi to get into India because it was a tie-up between Punjab Agro and Voltas that really brought Pepsi into India. Voltas, historically, the one that bought out uh, Hyderabad Alvin in the early 90s, a famous company in the refrigerator game then. 
As we go to the penultimate one and he gets 100, no, sorry, the final one in this round and then I'll show you the scores because I think it's an interesting scorecard to take a look at. No one's run away with the final and uh, Chennai looks very competitive this year. Final question on your screen. Here it comes in this round. The overall answer is a thought-provoking one. Well, you've got to look at each of the companies carefully. Steven's given it a shot. Lateral thinking. Uh, I'm just going to say uh, LinkedIn. Oh, the answer was not another company. Uh, minus 100 to you, Stephen. I think you just get the buzzer a little too early. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, it can be a tough one, even as you are seated in the comfort of your homes, trying to crack that. The correlation between all these and its lateral thinking, or what I call non googleable questions, is... All of these were started by husband and wife couples as companies. Chumbak, VMware, SlideShare, all of these were couple started companies as husband and wife. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, two rounds of quizzing done by Chennai standards. The quiz really hasn't gone one way, so everyone's got a fair chance. But before I show you that scorecard, I've got a couple more audience questions to ask you. Let me ask you this. This is also current affairs, and we've got a young crowd that follows this quiz. So let me ask you this one. Uh, well, it's business in a sense because it's employment. Who was employed or signed up as the manager of the Italian soccer team that won Euro? Well, the Euro that happened recently. Who was the manager of the Italian soccer team? Just key in the name and win yourself a prize if you're right and quick. Let me ask you one more question. Okay, let me ask you this from sport, and there's a lot of sport with the World Cup for cricket coming, T20 and so on. Let me ask you this question. Which city is the headquarters of the International Cricket Council? That's an easy one, and it really needs you to be quick and fast. Keen the answers into that chat box, all you youngsters watching this. As we move to take a look at the scores on Crucible Quotient appearing on your screen now. Here it comes. On 200, Kiran is within striking distance. Vijay and Steven are playing well. Arjun will recover from there. Shri has shown he can be really good through the journey getting here. So all of them are good quizzers. Chayakanthan, who is known to play with his blazing style, is on 400, which is very okay if I would go by past performances for the others. It's not an unreachable score at all. So by his own standards, he's playing a cautious final here today. Yet, he's well in the lead. And he would turn around and say, well, 200 is quite a bit of a lead from his way of playing. As we move into the final frontier, which will determine who goes into the nation's top 12. What's going to be key is for them to be quick on the final frontier. Well, you guessed it right. It's called speed. Here it comes. I've got six final questions where I'm going to be reading out the questions to you. You can choose where to stop me and use the discretion of speed on the buzzer. If you get it right, you get 100. You get it wrong, you get a minus 100. Remember, the value remains the same. So if you're ready, nothing appearing on your screen, hands on that buzzer. Just listen to me carefully for the moment. The first question. This country discovered oil about 40 years ago. Knowing that oil would eventually run out, they invested in a sovereign wealth fund. Shai Kantan, even before I could progress, yes. This is Norway. The first ever country to proactively say oil is scarcity and will run out. Wonderfully played. Wonderfully played. He took his chances. He took a half chance on that one. A hundred to him as we go to the next one. Consolidates his position. Gets to a 500. Here's the next one. This iconic logo is supposed to have been designed only on the previous night before the product was launched. The initial version used the same font as the parent entity's logo, 
which is catul. But catul had an awkward A, which created Kiran is giving it a shot. Yes, Kiran. And guess Google. You got to give me a more specific answer than just Sorry. Google. Yeah, alphabet. Oh, minus 100 to you. The Gmail logo. The A would come in alphabet too, uh, but a minus 100 to you. But he took a fairly good shot at that because he figured it is a Google family. And that's why I couldn't give it to him on Google. As we go to the third one, hands on the buzzer. 16th April, 1853. It was declared a public holiday. 3.30 p.m., 21 guns roared together. Lady Falkland, along with 400 special invitees, was present there. The project was undertaken by an entity called GIP. What first in Asia happened in that April day of 1853? Landmark moments that in many ways steamrolled Indian business, commerce, and the nation. Five seconds of time, nobody on the buzzer on that one. Tough questions here today. Well, in Asia, in India, for sure, that was the first ever train that carried 400 guests, steamed out of Bori Bandar at 3.30 p.m. So, tough question for everybody out there. Uh, as we go to question number four, and the numbers are important because you've got three to go. Here's the next one. The business was started in 1911 by my father. He ran it with a range of buttercream candies made in the family kitchen at Washington. It went bankrupt not once, but twice. Our fortunes changed around 1920 when my father started M-O-B-C. This later became history. Which great giant, Sri Ganesh, is giving it a shot? He needs a hundred. Yes, Sri Ganesh? Uh, I'm going to guess it's Mars. Well played. It was called the Mar O Bar Company, which is M-O-B-C. Beautifully played, high quality answer. Kiran is on 100, Vijay is on 100, Steven is on 100, and Sri Ganesh is on 100. That's a phenomenal Chennai final, lining up with the last two questions. Who's going to finish runner-up here? Well, hands on the buzzer. I would like to believe Sri uh, Jayakanthan would just stay quiet, because unless, of course, he's very sure he would want to up that, but he's too good to keep quiet. Two questions to go. He knows he can't lose from here. Penultimate question. This was originally created by a manager in a quiet location in Guatemala. The manager's name was Yolanda. To simplify the menu for busy people, Stevens giving it a shot. Uh, this was the Happy Meal. The Happy Meal at McDonald's. Yes. He just said, people take too much time to place their orders. Let me create something which is like an Indian thali. I'll give you a Happy Meal, which is technically nothing but an Indian thali equivalent. Beautifully answered. Stephen gets a crucial 100, takes him to 200. Final question from the Chennai round of Tata Crucible. Here I come. The first notice of the meeting of the formation was issued in 1909. The notice was sent out in three languages, interestingly, given the diaspora, Tamil, Telugu, and English. The venue and the premises was the Indian Bank at Ramakoti Buildings, in the Ratan Bazaar at Chennai. The entrance fee was fixed for 12 rupees. There was a monthly subscription of 2 rupees. What entity whose inaugural meeting was presided over by Tyagaraj Chettiar, after whom T. Nagar is famously named, are we talking about Sri Ganesh? I'm going to guess it's uh, Madras Management Association. Oh, well, they would be happy to have a legacy like that. It is certainly a wonderful organization. A minus 100 to you, Sri Ganesh, on that. This is Sikki, which like Fiki, has been a very, very powerful foundation. The South Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And they've 
made huge amounts of contribution to shaping business from southern India, perhaps don't get credited sufficiently enough for the work that they have done is Sikhi. But uh, a very good question leading you to your own Teenagar backyards. But ladies and gentlemen here today at yet another remarkable Chennai Tata Crucible, the result perhaps no different. Jayakanthan defends his title this time by playing a lot more within himself. If I may make that comment or volunteer that, he would still turn around and say, I didn't want to do anything but just win. It doesn't matter by how much you win. And that's perfectly fair as he gets into the nation's top 12. Yet again, consistency, his name is Jayakanthan. On 500, very clinical. Upstaging Kiran, who turned out runner-up a year ago, this time is Stephen from Vedanta, getting in some really quality answers. And with the money that he gets himself, I'm sure he will get himself more than just a happy meal, which gets him to that runner-up position here today. But ladies and gentlemen, as we celebrate knowledge at Tata Crucible, in the circumstances under which we've been bringing this quiz to you, it is my pleasure and privilege to bring in a very senior member of the Tata fraternity, our guest of honor here today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is the patronage and the continued support that we've received from the top management of the Tatas that learning and resilience go together, and that is the way to move forward despite the pandemic. Within two months of the pandemic a year ago, we had digital, uh, the digital version of Tata Crucible in place. And now, you got people from Lakshadweep, you got people from Andaman, Nicobar, Kohima taking part. We never imagined that. Thankfully, we had a TCSI on which backed us up and uh, helped us get on. But ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, it is the will of the leadership that really takes programs like this forward. And we really want to express our gratitude to people like our guest of honor, who've all stood by programs like this and said, learning and celebrating of knowledge in a country like ours must continue. Truly delighted, ladies and gentlemen, at a forum like this to have with us, the Managing Director and CEO of Tata Coffee, Mr. Chaco Thomas. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us here today. Truly appreciate your presence. Certainly been a tough year and Thank a half you. for all of us, for sure, for companies like you. Uh, first up, since we've got a very young audience, and a year ago, we had more than 4 million people watching Tata Crucible. So I think it's lessons that people like you have learned that we would like to valuably capture. Uh, what's your message from uh, the year and a half? So how do, you, how do you really summarize what has happened and what have you learned? And all of us have learned, you know, far more perhaps in the last one and a half years. All yours, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, let me just congratulate uh, everyone uh, for making the finals, I was truly amazed uh, at the 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 you know uh, the the way the answers were given. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I I I do remember. I I do wish I had uh, the same kind of uh, intellect to be able to actually uh, ma match some of the uh, some of them on the on on the call. Uh, so uh, to the answer that uh, what this year has actually taught us, uh, it's been just about perseverance. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think uh, there is anything else that one could actually do uh, but to persevere and then possibly, uh, you know, uh, give it to your best shot. And at the end of the day, uh, once you, you know that you're giving your best shot, uh, things do turn uh, for the better. So, yeah. Lovely. So well said. Uh, thank you so much for your time, of course, for being with us. And uh, we request you to just hold in uh, and stay there as we do the digital celebrations. Uh, coming up is our runner-up, Stephen from Vedanta. Oh, there he is. That's good graphic work. And he's got 18,000 to his kitty. And uh, he's certainly happy with that runner-up position. His first runner-up title in a very tough city. Congratulations, Stephen. Well done. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, marching into the nation's top 12 is like a seeded player, so to say, but consistency is sometimes very difficult to maintain. From Tata Consultancy Services, yet another title to Jai Kantan, 35,000 to him. But knowing the kind of quizzer that he is, it's not the 35,000 that he's going to be looking at, he's going to be looking at going through from that top 12 to the top six and probably 
you know, being the last man standing when the final happens. Uh, certainly capable of that. Congratulations yet again to you, Jai Kanthan. Uh, extremely clinical at that performance. And uh, as we go back to uh, Mr. Thomas, uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, any parting words from you for these people before we let you go? Uh, I'm really interested to see the uh, uh, you know uh, enthusiasm, the competitive spirit amongst all the participants, and just wanted to again uh, congratulate uh, both Jay Kantan as well as uh, Stephen, and of course all the other participants. And I uh, wanted to wish Jay Kantan all the very best for the next round, and nothing beats hard work and passion. So keep the learning spirit going and uh, request you to keep a cup of coffee at hand at all times. That's well, that's, that's been my only lone companion and for certainly and certainly your brands uh, have kept us through these difficult times. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chako, for joining us here today. Truly appreciate your presence and time and the continued patronage to this platform. Appreciate your presence. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after that remarkable final here today, it is the ever-consistent Jay Kanthan who holds on to that consistency of his, moves into the nation's top 12, representing TCS yet again in that league. Finishing runner-up from Vedanta is Stephen, and we will be back with you with the rest of Tamil Nadu, which leaves Chennai out and the rest of them in the next cluster. Till then, from me, Big Brain, from all of us here at Team Tata Crucible, thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned, rather, and do not miss the rest of the clusters. Rest of Tamil Nadu coming up next. For now, goodbye.